Welcome back to the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. I'm Beckett, and today we're meditating on the readings for Thursday of the 32nd week in Ordinary Time. And boy, are these readings preparing us for Advent, which prepares us for Christmas. Today, these, especially this gospel reading, uh, has an eschatological tone to it. It has an end times tone to it. And really, that's what Advent is all about. There is an apocalyptic sense of it because it's about the Lord's coming into the world. And it's not something we should be afraid of. And that's something to remember when we dive into today's gospel, especially. And as always, I'd like to look at what the church fathers have to say about it. Last time we spent a lot of time with Ambrose. Today we're going to look even more at Cyril of Alexandria. So let's take a, let's take a look at what, what they're talking about in today's gospel with the kingdom of God. It's at hand. It's coming. So let's hear what Cyril of Alexandria has to say about today's gospel reading. These miserable men ask in mockery, when will the kingdom of God come? This is like saying before the kingdom of God of which you speak comes, cross and death will seize you. What does Christ reply? He again displays his long-suffering and incomparable love to humanity. Reviled, he does not revile again. Suffering, he does not threaten. He does not harshly scold them. But because of their wickedness, he does not stoop to give them an answer to their question. He says only what is for the benefit of all people, that the kingdom of God does not come by watching. Behold, he says, the kingdom of God is within you. He also says, do not ask about the times in which the seasons of the kingdom of God will again arise and come. Rather, be eager that you may be found worthy of it. It is within you. That is, it depends on your own wills and, in, and it is in your own power. Whether or not you receive it, everyone that has attained to justification by means of faith in Christ and decorated by every virtue, is counted worthy of the kingdom of heaven. That's powerful. Let's hear what Ambrose has to say. In the last week we talked about Ambrose. Let's touch a little bit more about what St. Ambrose has to say about this also. Asked by the disciples when the kingdom of God would come, the Lord said, the kingdom of God is within you. Through the truth of grace and not through the slavery of guilt. Let those that would be free servants in the Lord and share in service also share in the kingdom. Christ said the kingdom of God is within you. He would not say when the kingdom would come. He said there would be a day of judgment so that he instilled in all terror of the judgment to come. And he did not guarantee its postponement. A little frightening, but sometimes it's okay to be afraid. Dr. Hahn often says that, you know, we're not afraid of God like we're afraid of the boogeyman under the bed. We're afraid of God with filial fear. That is with the fear that children have of their parents. It's a, it's a fear out of respect for their authority over us. Let's also hear what Cyril of Alexandria also has to say. He says, Christ speaks to the holy disciples of true companionship. He says, The days will come when you desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and will not see it. He would not have them prepare, excuse me, he would have them prepared for all that can cause people grief. He wants them to be ready to endure patiently so that approved they may enter the kingdom of God. He warns them that before his coming from heaven at the consummation of the world, tribulation and persecution will precede him. Doesn't it feel like we're living in something of, of that right now? Tribulation and persecution. They will wish to see one of the days of the Son of Man, such as those when they were still going around with Christ and speaking with him. Now Ambrose takes a different look at it. He says, he who knows the sign of the coming judgment also knows the end. Christ 
is like flashing lightning, since, as the light, the Son of God illumines the inner parts of the heavenly mysteries. In that hour, it says, he also knows the hour, but he knows it for himself. He does not know it for me. He then suitably asserts that the cause of the flood, fire, and the judgment proceed from our sins, because God did not create evil, but our actions devised it for themselves. And if you were here a couple of nights ago and you heard Dr. Ralph Martin speaking on the church and our nation in crisis, you heard him talk about these things, that we are friends of Christ, we are companions of Christ, we are loved by Christ, but a judgment will come, tribulation will come, and they will come because of sin. Cyril of Alexandria takes this a step further, and he says, At the end of time, at the end of the world, Christ will not descend from heaven, obscurely or secretly, but with godlike glory and as dwelling in the light which no one can approach, he declared that his coming will be like lightning. He was born indeed in the flesh of a woman to fulfill the dispensation for our sakes. For this reason, he emptied himself, making himself poor and no longer showed himself in the glory of the Godhead. The season and the necessity of the dispensation summoned him to this humiliation. After his resurrection from the dead, ascension into heaven, and enthronement with God the Father, he will ascend again. He will descend again. He will not descend with his glory withdrawn or in the lowliness of human nature. In the majesty of the Father, with the companies of the angels guarding him, he will stand before him as God and Lord of all. He will come before us as lightning and not secretly. This is in comparison with Christmas, right? Because he came in a way that was known to a few, but not to all. But at the coming, the second coming, the parousia, the apocalypse, he will come that in a way that will not be secret. But at the same time, it's not something we should be afraid of. There is a, a gospel in, the, in Matthew's gospel at the resurrection of Jesus, when after Mary uh, Magdalene sees Jesus and the re- resurrected, he tells her, Goes back, go back and tell my brothers um, that I'm raised from the dead and, and then I'll meet them. And the gospel says that she runs back with fear and awe. I heard a priest once say that, what experience do women have that where they experience both awe and fear at the same time? Pre-wedding jitters. It's the feeling we have right before we're about to get married. I know before I got married, I had that fear. I was both afraid of the moment and in awe of it at the same time. And that's what the second coming is all about. And that's what Cyril of Alexandria is talking about. That's what St. Ambrose is talking about. He's talking about what we should feel about the end times. Especially those of us who frequent the sacraments and those who repeatedly hear me on this YouTube channel talking about the Reflections on Mass, you hear me talk about the same things. Frequenting the sacraments, frequenting the Sacrament of Reconciliation, uh, frequenting the uh, going to Mass as often as we can. If you can do it daily, please do it daily. I know that during this COVID time, many of us are quarantined. Thankfully, here in Steubenville, uh, we can attend daily Mass wearing masks, of course, um, we can receive the Eucharist, and we can also uh, go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation at least once a week. Many of you can't, and I know that many of you are suffering because you can't. But the sacraments are what prepare us for the second coming. The sacraments are what help us not be afraid in the, in the same kind of fear of the boogeyman under the bed. The sacraments would give us a filial fear and respect for the second coming of Christ, Because he will not come in secret. He will not come hidden. He will come in his full glory, and we have to be prepared for that. We have to be fully prepared on the inside. Going back to what they were talking about, the kingdom of God is within you. 
He will come in a way that's not secret. He will come in a way where the kingdom of God most is most fully revealed, both outside of us and both within us. And we have to continue to prepare the house of the Lord, the tabernacle of the Lord within our hearts. Every time we receive the sacraments, we come closer and closer to being prepared for his second coming. And again, it's not something we have to be afraid of. It's something we have to have respect for. It's both fear and awe, respect for the moment, and in anticipation for it, like butterflies in the stomach. If we don't have butterflies in us for the second coming, then we have to bring that to the Lord in the sacraments, especially in the Eucharist. Receiving the Eucharist, say, Lord, I don't have butterflies about your second coming, but I'd like to. I'd like to look forward to it as a wedding day. Because that's what it's all about. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's what the, the book of Revelation is all about. The wedding supper of the Lamb. And if you don't believe me, pick up Dr. Hahn's book, The Lamb's Supper. It's all about how the Mass and the book of Revelation are tied together. And it's also tying together the apocalypse, the second coming, the parousia, which is what our readings today are all about. So again, bring to the Lord your hope and your desire for his second coming, because it's going to be a time when true peace is brought to the world, when true hope is presented before every man and woman, and true love is revealed to the hearts, to the minds of all. Let us surrender ourselves to the Lord, especially in the sacraments, in anticipation of his second coming. I'm praying for you all. Pray for all of us here at the St. Paul Center. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like this video. Share it with your friends. And remember, we ourselves at the St. Paul Center live a lot by your donations. If you can donate to us, please go to the St. Paul Center. stpaulcenter.com forward slash donate. Please help us in our ministry. We agape every one of you. See you next time. God bless you.